the Green Hornet. He hunts the biggest of all game, public enemies that even the G-men cannot reach, the Green Hornet. Adventurer, put it on ice. The events and characters depicted in this drama are fictitious. Any similarity to actual persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. Miss Williams, what's that? Why is the whistle blowing? I don't know, Mr. Brinkley. Something's gone wrong. Find out what it is at once. Mr. Brinkley, it's the refrigerating system. Open packing plant six. What? The new system we installed yesterday. Better come along and look for yourself. I most certainly will. Miss Williams, yes, Mr. call the police emergency squad. If any men are overcome by the ammonia fumes, we'll need all the help they can give us. Right down here, Mr. Brinkley, around the corner. Yes, yes, how did it happen, Carson? Are there any men inside the plant? Can't tell how it happened, Mr. Brinkley. The system was okay when we inspected it yesterday. I hope this won't spoil all that meat we've got in there. Forget that. What does it matter what happens to the meat? It's the men who may be trapped inside I'm worried about. We'll soon see, Mr. Brinkley. They're right through this door. <laughs> Are they all right? Watch out for the ammonia fumes. Bring them out here in the fresh air. Stand back. Give them air. One side, one side. Are they all out? Out of the way. Let us through, please. It's Mr. Brinkley. Yeah, we got him out, Mr. Brinkley. Pretty close call, but they'll pull through. How many were there, Hendrick? Now, lucky thing, there was only two of them, sir. Me and Smith just managed to get them before that ammonia. <coughs> Hendrick, you've got quite a dose of that ammonia yourself. Better have the doctor take a look at you. Well, I'm all right now, sir. Just got a little whiff. Nothing to worry about. I just took a look in through the open door, Mr. Brinkley. That meat is ruined. Uh, is that true, Henry? Uh, I guess so, Mr. Brinkley. You know, it ain't no good when that ammonia's been at it. Completely spoiled. Two carloads of beef that we might just as well throw away. Uh, Carson, I can't understand it. We've had one serious loss after another, and now this. Look here, Hendricks. You were in charge of this unit. How do you explain this, Miss? Oh, I wish I knew, Mr. Carson. It don't make sense. We don't want ex- open when it should have been closed. It's the one where those two men weren't killed. How did you like Brinkley? Okay. He told me he was in the city club with you. That's true. Well, look here, Lowry. What is there to these stories that Brinkley's meat isn't up to the Board of Health requirements? That's what I'd like to get more dope on. Yes? Mr. Brinkley is here to see you. Brinkley? Oh, send him right in. I want to see him. Why, Brinkley wants to see me, and at this particular time... I guess I'd better be going alone. No, Lowry, stay here. Go right in, Mr. Brinkley. Thank you. How are you, Brinkley? You've met Mr. Lowry, haven't you? Yes, yes, I have. Went through the plant with me. How are you? Reed, that's what I've come to see you about. The accident at your meat packing plant this morning? Oh, by the way, how are the two men who were overcome by ammonia? Oh, they're fine, Reed, resting comfortably. The men got them out in the nick of time. Brinkley, is it true that you've been having a lot of trouble lately? Well, yes. Yes, it is. Lowry's been telling me that some of the restaurants are turning down your product. They have, and I can't say I blame them. Quite a lot of it's not up to standard. Why not bring it up to standard again? You know the reputation of my plant, Reed. It's always been very good. Yeah, up to now. Before this, I prided myself on the fact that the Board of Health has always given my products the highest possible rating. Well, you mean that rating has changed? Changed is putting it mildly. Hmm. The Board of Health has condemned more than half of the meat in my plant in the last week. Well, things sure have gone haywire. When I think of the juicy steaks you used to... Unless something's done, I'll go bankrupt. I'll be forced to sell my business. Oh, that's too bad, Brinkley. Yet, at the same time, I scarcely see what this has to do with a newspaper publisher. Why come to me? Reed, I'm convinced there's something crooked behind it. Crooked? What makes you think that, Mr. Brinkley? This, uh, accident today, for one thing. Any evidence of tampering? None. I didn't see any either. Look like just plain carelessness to me. I'm sure it isn't. What makes you so positive? Well, it's nothing tangible. Then if you can't put your finger on it, Mr. Brinkley... Yet all the trouble has started since I turned down an offer to sell my business. Oh, I see. You think this is an attempt to force you to sell? Exactly. Well, I take it this attempt is proving successful. Read my backs to the wall. Sounds simple enough to me. Get the police after it. Have them check up. I have, with no results. They believe I'm simply trying to cover up my own negligence. Have they investigated the outfit that wants to buy you out? They've tried to. What do you mean? Exactly that. They haven't been able to find out. Well, isn't it a bit unusual for a prospective buyer to conceal his identity? Yes, Reed, it is. But it's not unheard of. Sure, it might be a rival meatpacking concern who wants to put you out of business, then buy your equipment for practically nothing. Unless I can stop these accidents, they'll get it. Frankly, 
You supply meat to all the hospitals and city food centers, don't you? That's true, Reed. It's imperative that they're sure of the quality and purity of the meat they use. In that case, clearing up these uh, difficulties at your plant is a matter of public concern. Right, boss. And when the public welfare is jeopardized, the Daily Sentinel is interested, very interested. I knew I could count on you, Reed. A reporter can find out a lot of things that the police can't. Yeah, especially a good reporter. Well, I'll see what you can dig up. Track down this outfit. The one that's made Mr. Brinkley that offer? Cover that plant from cellar to skylight. Check on every one and everything. Check, boss. It's an assignment. I'll give you all the help I can. Brinkley, what happens to your business is a private concern. But when the quality of the food you sell the public is being tampered with, then it's a matter for investigation. And believe me, boss, when I start investigating, I investigate. Before I'm through, I'll know this setup like I know the palm of my hand. Well, this here room, bud, where we cut the meat up into different sections. Hmm. What about that saw? What's that for? Oh, the same thing. Sometimes we have to saw through big bones. And uh, this belt here is a conveyor for carrying the meat from one operation to the next. Mm-hmm. What's behind this door? Come on in. Ooh, say, it's cold in here. Yeah, I'll just... Hey, go. don't close that door. This is a refrigerator room. If we should get stuck in here with the door closed, we'd be out of luck. Might freeze to death. Yeah, I'm that way already. This is where you hang the meat, huh? Yeah. Got to keep it cold so that it don't spoil. Mr. Carson, our expert on refrigeration, is mighty particular about that. He can have it. I've seen plenty. Let's get out of here before they use me for a snowman. You say your name's Lowry? That's right. Mr. Brinkley sent me over to find out about that offer for his meatpacking plant. I, uh, I understand that offer came through you. Yes, it did. I'm a broker, sort of a middleman. Who made that offer? Sorry, but I'm not at liberty to give out that information. What do you mean, not at liberty? I told Mr. Brinkley the same thing. This sort of transaction comes my way quite frequently. My client doesn't wish to have his identity revealed. Now, listen here, you... Furthermore, I don't know who made the offer myself. The whole affair has been conducted by mail. The bank account... A phony name. I checked on it. It's a registered business name, which is perfectly legal. And Brinkley knows the money's good. But I still... That's all I can tell you. Good day. Casey, you see before you a reporter without a story. Don't tell me, Lowry, the demon reporter couldn't discover anything. I know the meatpacking business from A to Z. I know it cold. In fact, after being in that ice room, very cold. Well, that ought to make a nice feature next to the stamp column. What is it? Lowry's back, Mr. Reed, without a story. Shall I send him in? Oh, yes. No, no, I'll be out. Casey, I never want to look a sirline in the face again. No luck, eh, Lowry? Not a trace, boss. If you ask me, Brinkley's having pipe dreams. No trace of any dirty work going on in this place. As far as I could see, those accidents were caused by carelessness. Nothing more. You couldn't track down the outfit that's offered to buy his business? I drew a blank on that, too. It's a blind alley, boss. What did you find out? Oh, I know the business. I know that there's a big shipment of beef coming in by truck tomorrow night, for example. But you can't call that a new scoop. Tomorrow night, eh? Hmm. Is there anything unusual in that, Mr. Reed? Huh? No, no, Miss Case, not exactly, but... Uh, What's on your mind, boss? Uh, just thinking. I have a dinner appointment with Brinkley and Carson at the Civic Club. I'll have just time enough to go home and dress. Goodbye, Lowry. Keep trying. Well, how do you like that, Casey? We have a mystery on our hands, and he's thinking about dinner. As soon as Britt Reed reached his apartment, he sat down at his desk and wrote a letter. Cato, I'm having dinner at the Civic Club with Mr. Brinkley and his assistant, Carson. Yes, Mr. Britt. I'll put the hornet seal on this letter. There. It's addressed to Mr. Brinkley, Cato. Be sure he gets it at dinner this evening. I tell you, Carson and I are worried, Reed. The Board of Health has threatened to shut the plant up if there's one more case of contaminated meat. Let me see. Carson, you're the chemist of the plant, aren't you? You're responsible for the condition of the meat. Yes, I am. I inspect it very carefully. Pardon me. A letter for you, Mr. Brinkley, just came by messenger. Hmm. I wonder who. This letter's from the Green Hornet. The Green Hornet? 
That's impossible. Look at this seal. Yes. I'm quite familiar with the Green Hornet seal. There's no mistake about that. He says he's going to hijack that shipment of meat tomorrow night. Oh, you can usually depend on the Green Hornet to do as he says. How are we going to stop him? Well, why not delay the shipment? Can't do that, Reed. That meat has to be here on time. Well, then send it ahead. We'll send it by train. Have the trucks take a different route. There ought to be some way. That's it, Reed. We can't send it by train because of the cost. But we can reroute the truck so the Green Hornet won't know about the change. That's an idea, Mr. Brinkley. Suppose the Hornet learns of this change of route. How can he if we take the right precautions? If you say so, Mr. Brinkley. I do say so. And we'll do it right now, at this table, secretly. So the Green Hornet will never be able to find out our plan. <laughs> Curtain falls on the first act of our Green Hornet adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue our story. Returning from his dinner at the Civic Club with Brinkley and Carson... Britt Reed told Cato what had occurred. You had the letter brought to the Civic Club at just the right time, Cato. When Brinkley opened it and saw the Green Hornet seal, he didn't know what to say. Did your plan work? I sent that letter to Brinkley for a purpose, Cato. The Green Hornet threatened to hijack a truck caravan of meat that's coming to Brinkley's plant. I suggested that the trucks be rerouted over a different road to evade the Green Hornet. Why, Mr. Britt? Well, only a few of Brinkley's employees will know of the new route we decided on this evening. I'm convinced that all Brinkley's troubles are being planned by one of those employees in order to gain control of Brinkley's business. I see. Now, Brinkley thinks I'm going on a fishing trip. Instead, we're meeting that truck. You bought the green one? We'll take the mask and the gun and all our equipment, but not the Black Beauty. No? Now, we'll be out on the open road tomorrow afternoon. The Black Beauty will be too easy to recognize. This time, Cato will travel in a small sedan with a mask handy. If Mr. Brinkley recognizes you... Brinkley isn't going out on the road at all, Cato, so we won't run into someone like him who might recognize me. You and I are the only living men to know me as the Green Hornet, Cato. And no one else ever will. Yes, yes, Miss Williams, what is it? I called Mr. Reed's office. He's uh, already left on that fishing trip. Already left? I didn't think he'd go so early. He left orders that Lowry was to come over to see you. He's on his way. All right. Lowry's a reporter who was here the day of the accident, isn't he? Yes, I'm glad as long as Reed himself isn't available that he's having Lowry come over. You'll pardon me, Mr. Brinkley. I can't understand why you're so nervous. That shipment... If the Green Hornet should discover our new route... Only about ten of us here in the plant know that. Still... If you're so jumpy, uh, why not call in the police? And increase the chances of a leak? The less people who know, the less chance of the Green Hornet finding out. I think you're unduly alarmed about it. Is Mr. Lowry, sir? Oh, good. Come right in, Lowry. Well, hello, Mr. Brinkley. You know Mr. Reed's out of town. A uh, fishing trip, yes, I know. Uh, uh, you know Carson? Yes. Uh, I'll be going along. Got a lot of meat to inspect this afternoon. See you again, Lowry. Oh, Sure. Hey, what's eating him? He looks like he bit on a tough steak. Pardon me. Carson doesn't approve of your employer's ideas. The Green Hornet threatened to hijack... that? The Green Hornet? Yes. Don't tell me he's mixed up in this. He sent me a letter threatening to hijack a truck caravan full of meat. Reed told me not to release it for publication. Mr. Reed said that? In order to avoid publicity, Lowry. Oh, I get it. You made plans to checkmate the Green Hornet. You don't want to take any chances of letting him get out. Is that it? Precisely. Hasn't Reed told you? All he said was to stay close to you. Now I see why. I'm worried about tonight. I wish I could make sure nothing happens to that shipment. Why don't you? Huh? What's to stop you? You have a car, haven't you? Yes, I then have. Come on. If we leave now, you'll be able to meet those trucks halfway. If anything starts to happen, you'll be right there. But what could I do? You can decide that later. Come on, Brinkley. All right, I'll go. Maybe I'll meet this Green Hornet face to face. But where are you going, Lowry? Well, what do you think? If anybody's meeting the Green Hornet, this is one baby who wants a grandstand seat. I'm going to be right beside you. Driving out of the city, Brinkley and Lowry traveled all afternoon. That evening, as darkness fell, Britt Reed and Cato sat in a car that was pulled off the road and hidden from sight. Look, Cato, there's a car coming along the road. When it goes by, we might as well start after those trucks again. We want to be there with time to spare. It's coming fast, Mr. Britt. Cato, did you notice a license number on that car? It's Brinkley's. 
I noticed it last night in front of the Civic Club. He has a very low license number. Where is he going? He must be worried about his trucks. This may ruin everything. What do we do, Mr. Red? We have to make sure Brinkley doesn't reach those trucks before we've taken care of everything. He might recognize me in spite of my disguise. Yes, sir. We'll drive up past them. Several hundred large tacks in front of their tires would delay them a long time. Long enough for us to accomplish what we set out to do. Turning onto the road, the tree pressed down on the accelerator. The sedan sped along the concrete after Brinkley's car. There we are, Cato, stopping for that light ahead. Get the tacks ready. Oh, we're in luck. The light's changing. We'll be able to pass them before they get going too fast. The tacks now. Good work, Cato. Both front fire. Take the wheel for a while, Smitty. Ah, uh, Hendricks, you keep it. Tough job driving over this strange road. Uh, They'd like the regular one. What's the idea in shifting the route on us? Search me, Smitty. He's been jittery ever since that icing plant broke down. All I hope is you don't get wise to what's going on. Not a chance. By this time tomorrow, Brinkley will be glad to sell out. As long as I get my dough, that's all I'm worrying about. <laughs> you and me both, Smitty. Yeah, we'll get it. And more than we figure, too. Yeah? How do you mean, Hendricks? Well, we know what's going on, don't we? Sure, we're the babies who've been doing all the dirty work for Carson. You got it, Smitty. After Carson makes Brinkley sell the plant, we ain't finished, see? You mean we tell Carson he's got to keep shelling out dough to us? All right. Either Carson keeps paying us hush money or we squeeze. <laughs> <laughs> See, wouldn't Brinkley be surprised to know that Carson's the guy who's figured out this whole scheme? He ain't going to find out. You and me and Carson are the only ones who know. Carson ain't going to spell it, and neither do we. If he pays us enough. Yeah, if he pays us. Ah, he'll pay all right. Carson's no dummy. Hey, Hendricks, look up ahead. Yeah, I seen it. A car across the road. But this ain't where we were supposed to meet Carson. Who else could it be, a sap? It must be Carson. <coughs> yeah, it's Carson. I recognize his car. Hey, Carson, what's the idea of meeting us here? I thought you was going to be five miles up further. I had to change our plans, Hendrix. A while back, I noticed that a car was trailing me along the road. Yeah? Who was it? I don't know. But to be on the safe side, I turned into a side road to duck him. And met you here instead of the regular place. Say, hey, what's going on? This business and making us take a different route from the regular run. What's up? The Green Hornet threatened to hijack this truck. Green Hornet? So that's it. Well, let him. Won't that help ruin Brinkley's business? Not as well as my way, Smith. I'm a chemist. I'm going to shoot the meat in this truck full of germs. When the Board of Health inspects the shipment tomorrow, Brinkley will really be finished. Yes, you're right. That's why I call the state police. What? The state police? Who wants them around? I told him you were calling, Hendricks. I said you wanted protection from the Green Hornet. You understand? Oh, I get it. That's in case this Green Hornet should show up later, huh? Exactly. Now, let's get busy. Now, just a second, Carson. Me and Smitty got a paper for you to sign first. A paper? Yeah. Hold it under the panel light, Hendricks, so he can see. Read it, Carson. It says what we're doing this job for, all about it. But I don't understand. We want to sign, see you. We don't open this truck. That thing's practically a confession. I won't Don't sign. worry. We'll tear it up when we get paid. If we get paid enough. You'll get paid. We're making sure, that's all. Come on. We wouldn't be sad enough to show this to anybody if that's what's bothering you, Carson. Proves we're in as deep as you. That's true. Well, here's a pen. Got it all ready. There. Now, let's not delay any longer. <laughs> So the state troopers are going to make sure our plan works. Ha <laughs> I thought I'd laugh. Now, come on, you two. Open up the back of this truck so I can get inside and do a job on that meat. Okay. This is some truck, ain't it? Plenty cold inside of it, too. Special refrigeration and all. And here's the door, Carson. Around and back. Open it. Yeah, that's what I... Hey, Hendricks. I thought you locked it up. I'll be sure I locked it. It ain't locked now. Never mind that. Get busy. Open those doors. Okay. They're pretty heavy. Feel that blast of cold air, Carson? Sure is chilly inside there. That's exactly where you're going. What the devil is that? He's wearing a mask. Don't move any of you. The Green Hornet. No. So Carson was right. You did trail him. But, but I took a side road. I lost I you. I followed you. My lights were out. Can you beat that? So you're the guy who opened this lock. Well, Ben Hairpin. You've been inside the truck. Climb up here. Now, let's be sensible about this. Oh. Listen, Hornet. Climb, or would you like me to pull the trigger? No. No. Don't shoot, Hornet. Don't. I suppose there's nothing in that gun but gas. I've heard about the Hornet. And you know I mean what I say. No, it's okay by ass. Shut up, Hendricks. You can't bluff me, Hornet. What if you do pull that trigger? Where will that get you? I've no time for a talk, Carson. In. No, you can't make me. Take him. Yes, you... I can't breathe. 
Now you two, put him up. Uh, I didn't say you shoot. Who done it? If you didn't, I'd have a man right behind you. Get Carson in here. Uh, okay, okay. Only don't do nothing to us. He's heavy. Over the telephone. Let's see. Yeah. I'm coming out. Now don't try anything. Remember, there's a man behind you. We ain't. <sighs> All right, in with Carson. Now, hold on, Hunter. We ain't done a thing. We were just working for Carson. Uh, well, we'll take anything you want to know. I don't need information. Inside your ass. Oh, uh, in. Okay. We're good. And you'll stay there. Ah. Oh, you can't. You can't close the door. I don't want to freeze us to death. Get back, both of you. There. Mr. Hurry, Cato. Yes, sir. Frankie's had time enough to fix the tires on his car. He'll be out looking for us by now. Yes, Mr. Bates. State troopers may be out looking as well. You want to make sure they discover these rats right where they are without getting us. I understand. You've got the sedan going. I'll drive this truck. Keep trailing me. We'll keep moving along this road till we meet up with Frankly. Get going. Brinkley and Lowry drove along the road. I can't see any sign of our truck yet, Lowry. According to the schedule, we ought to be up with it by now. If we hadn't got those blowouts, it'd be okay. The way that car went past us and dropped packs on the road, it must have been the Green Hornet. We have the state troopers with us now. Even if we did locate the truck, we'll get there in time. Look, Mr. Brinkley, up ahead, coming toward us. Isn't that your truck? Uh, yes, it is. Hey, you troopers! That's it up ahead. Get up there. That's it, all right. The truck stopped. There's a guy jumping out of the driver's seat. That's not the regular driver. Look, he's getting in a car beside the truck, Winkley. The troopers will never catch him. Hurry! You troopers, after that car. It's going too fast. That's the Green Hornet. I thought he had a special car. Couldn't catch that one with a bullet the way it's traveling. Say, what's that? Somebody's yelling for help. Whoever it is, it's from inside my truck. We'll get you out. Well, hurry up. It's locked. Stand back. I'll shoot the lock off. There. Swing these doors back. Hurry up. Hurry up. I'm full. Well, Carter, don't shoot. Hendrick Smith. What happened? The Green Hornet, he caught us, shoved us in the eye. Hey, give me a hand. There's another guy here. He's passed out. Okay. Oh, it's Carson. By all that's holy, what's he doing here? Look at what he had with him, Mr. Brinkley. Full equipment for infecting the meat. What do you two logs know about this? We've got nothing on us. That guy Carson was in with a Green Hornet. Sure, that's it. Is that so? Then why did the Hornet gas Carson? Yes. Well, we don't know. Renfus, Vinny, they got us. Stay on out here. The only place you're going is jail. What's he got in his hand? I ain't got nothing. Hand it over. Give me that. What is it, Lowry? Wow. Just about a full confession. That's all you need. Come on, you two. You're headed for the cool, and I don't mean refrigeration. It's too bad we couldn't get the Green Hornet, too. To think that Carson was in with a crook like him. Anyway, Brinkley, you have one thing to be thankful for. Yes? Green Hornet or no Green Hornet, your troubles have been put on ice for good. Uh. 